Okay, we're going to get the gantry set up now. The rails go on the top of this portion of it. You'll see that there's counter bores where these supports are underneath. We're going to turn this over. We're going to add nut inserts, number eight nut inserts onto the bottom of this. We have to make sure we know which ones we're going into because we don't want to make a mistake and put them into these holes. So we'll start with these two. I'm going to try to get these as flush as possible since we're going to have this on it, on top of it. Okay, good. Alright, now we're going to put on the these supports first because we, we really needed to put on these nut inserts before we put on the supports. Obviously we can't get to them when we put the supports on. And we cannot do the the rails until the supports are on. So let's go ahead and do that first. We will need one inch quarter inch screws. Quarter inch screws are one inches in length. And uh, cross dowels. We'll need 12 of each. So we're going to use these counter board holes now and line up the, the support so that the, the counterboard holes line up with these holes on the edge. If you do it the other way around, it's not going to match. It's non-symmetrical. Always start the, um, the driving of the screws into the cross dowels by hand. If you try to do this with a, uh, a driver, an electric driver or a drill will potentially strip the the cross dowel. We don't want to tighten it too much yet. Okay, now we're ready to do the other side and we're gonna orient it the same way. And this one goes in a little bit because we don't want this particular support to interfere with the um, the rail the rail screws since this one is maneuverable this one is uh, adjustable we want to be able to get to the to the uh, to the screws so go ahead and put in the one inch screws and cross dowels. <laughs> Okay, we're going to be putting on the V-Groove bearing mounts now. Um, you want to put the, the one with, there's going to be two different ones. You're going to have one that has a, an adjustable bearing and one that has non-adjustable. And I'm using, um, I'm putting the non-adjustable one on the side that is, has the fixed rail. Uh, actually has the the um, it has the adjustable rail, so I can use that to my advantage. I'm putting the the gantry on the machine, and I'm going to be using four just for one side, four one and a half inch screws, and four cross dowels. So note the the position of my gantry and the side that I'm um, putting on the uh, V groove bearing mounts. There is a tiny bit of wiggle room you have here, just to make sure that when you do have it on, that all four um, bearings are touching the rail. So you have a little bit of variation here that you can adjust. For the beginning, I'm just going to press this all the way in, so it should be as square as it needs to be. You can also check along the edge to make sure that it is pretty square, straight along the edge. Now for the other side, we're going to be, going to be putting on the remaining bearing mount, the big bearing mount. Another four one and a half inch screws are needed. These are quarter inch screws.
For the next um, step, we're going to need four of these 3 8 inch screws at 2 inches in length. We're going to put a V-groove bearing on it. Then we're going to put a thin washer on it. And we're going to be putting a medium washer on that so we get a good uh, spacing with the V-groove bearing. And the V-groove bearing will turn freely because of the spacer and because the head of this screw is smaller than the outer races. Uh, the diameter is smaller than, and it doesn't uh, conflict with the outer races of the, the bearing. And then we'll also need four of these three, uh, three eighths inch um, nuts. And we're going to be using on um, this side only one of these washers. On the other side we'll be using two, and I'll show you that in a moment. Use a correct wrench to do this, not what I'm using. We take another set, the same assembly that we've noted before. And you can go ahead and tighten these down pretty tight because these are not going to be adjustable. Now we go to the other side and we have the same assembly. We have the, the screw, the bearing, thin washer, and large washer. I put that on the, bottom, on the outer edge of this. And we take another washer and, just, and a nut. We fasten this down. And you can just finger tighten this one so you can still get a little bit of, of uh, movement here. It should be pretty tight still. Um, so we can get, we can, we'll be able to move it once we, uh, once we get on the table and, and adjust it. Now we need to put in a cross dowel. You'll have to move this washer out of the way so you can put this one in. You can alternatively put this one in first with the screw. But don't tighten it up against the screw yet. You can see when you're tightening it, it'll move this assembly inward. So we want to loosen it up so it has, um, it's all the way out so we can, we'll be able to get it on the rails. Do the same thing with, with the other side. I'm going to go ahead and put the cross dowel in first so I don't have any problems with the washer. It helps that the cross dowel is aligned properly. Take the washer and the nut. Alright, we're going to go ahead and tighten these rails, but uh, we want to push them as far out as possible. So when we do get the gantry on, we can uh, tighten it at the shortest section between the two rails and then run it along and then um, it can tighten or it can move itself and it will re-tighten. We really should use proper wrenches for this. Now we're ready to put this on. And the all right, I've turned the machine around so we can get the um, get the gantry bridge um, on the rails. I'm going to start with the first because the, the rails are going to be too wide to be able to um, put them on any other way. So we're going to have to slide on this way and then get the other one on, making sure that both sides are getting on. And now we can screw down. It puts the, the gantry bridge in tension. You shouldn't hear any knocking when this is done. And you can also try to, you don't want to over tighten it, slightly over tightening it can, can cause problems. You can see that you can freely spin it, so if you can freely spin it, then you, you will need to tighten it. I can feel a little bit of looseness there, so I think that we need to tighten it on this end. Not loose. So essentially, what it's done is you can still see a little bit of looseness there. You want to tighten it a little bit more. What it's done is it's actually moved the rail because there's a lot of force between these two um, sides of the bearings. So once this is done, you want to make sure that you tighten these very well. Feel it's very very easy to move here, but it starts to get a little bit 
um, more difficult to move here. So what you can do also is loosen up the screws a bit over here. I'm going to go ahead and do that so the rail will be able to move a little bit easier and reposition itself. You want to try to get the same same degree of, of friction, feeling of friction all the way along. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten it back up. And this time we want to tighten it really tight. We'll go ahead and re-tighten all of these. So it's pretty solid now. And if you, you can go ahead and feel the the big group bearings to see if they're sloppy at all. And if they have any slop whatsoever, just tighten these down. Yep. Okay, now we're ready to put on the the rails along the gantry bridge. And we're gonna be using the strong tie, Simpson strong tie, ESR 2523. And the um, looking from the back of the machine, there's the overhand here. Um, this should be oriented where the information is displayed um, like this, it should say Simpson Strong Tie, and then the MSTA224Z, and the ESR2523. And if you look on the other side, it has some information in between these two, so you don't want that side, you want to have it on this side where there's no information. So go ahead and lay it down, and you're going to start driving in three quarter inch number eight screws. Just like the other one, just screw it in enough to catch the the number eight nut insert on the other side. So we know we have all of them being able to adjust slightly to to put on the other rail same thing in fact this one is if you're looking at it in the same orientation you're going to mirror the rails on the other side we're going to need nine of the number eight screws at one and a half you may also get these in one and a quarter they'll still work just take the screw and one of these will be a one inch screw because we don't want to conflict with this the screw here. And we'll take a spacer. We'll need nine spacers. For the first screw, we're going to put the spacer in first, put in the one inch screw, and then add a washer and a nut. Be patient with this particular screw as it may pose a tiny problem because of the space you have here. I'm going to tighten this a little bit, not too much, so the nut doesn't fall out. Now we're going to take the remaining screws are one and a half or one and a quarter. And put a spacer in, a washer, and a nut. Now we're done with putting in the assemblies of the screws, nuts, washers, and um, spacers. I'm going to move it as far out as I can, just like the last one, and I'm going to go ahead and 